Welcome to Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce, your host. Today, we're talking to organizations that support our business community. First up, we'll speak to Bruce McCormick, General Manager of Downtown Fredericton, Inc., along with his president, Mike Babineau. So Downtown Fredericton is a business improvement area. We're uh, legislated through the province of New Brunswick. Uh, we're bylawed by the city of Fredericton, but we're a membership organization that decided back in 1982 to uh, organize and uh, do a little bit more for our members. If you were to say the mandate of the organization in one sentence, what would it be? Uh, to provide the general public a safe and clean downtown. What services do you provide? We create programs such as a facade improvement program, such as a downtown dollar program. Um, we have a number of things that we do to help them out. And, uh, you know, not that we want to talk about COVID a lot, but those programs have really helped them through this uh, really tough time. Tell me a bit about the history or the heritage of the organization. It was a group of businessmen that got together that talked about what was going on and what they were like to see happen. You know, with the heritage properties and the buildings downtown, the, uh, the, all the independent retailers that really made downtown, it was an, uh, an opportunity for them to do something to bring more people back into downtown. Downtown was starting to look really bad. Uh, this group of businessmen got together and decided to go to the city and create a business improvement area and do things in partnership with the city. Mike, I have a question for you. As chair of the board, tell me how that structure works. Uh, it comprises of the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer as the executive. Uh, and we work closely with Bruce and we attend various meetings with the uh, city police and, and uh, you know, working on things like security in the downtown and safety. And, and we try to bring, uh, we listen a lot to our members um, and when they have complaints or when they have some issues or their wish list of what they'd like to see downtown. It kind of comes to the board and then we discuss it on a board level and then we kind of make decisions uh, based on that. So there's 12 board members, uh, all elected at our annual general meeting. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the size of your team and what their functions are. We have three full-time staff. So there's myself, we have a marketing communications officer and an office manager. And with that, all those, all the details of running an office, operating an office and, and working with their membership is done by three. Tell me about how you get your message out. Do you see your main audience as your members, those who are within the BIA boundaries, or do you see your audience as people in Fredericton that you want to come and support those businesses? We're a membership-driven organization, but our members depend on customers. So our Downtown Dollar Program was created for those customers. Tell us what the Downtown Dollar Program is. We sell downtown dollars to uh, customers, and, um, and, they, and each year we have a, a huge promotion. It comes up in November, just before the Christmas season, and we sell 100,000 downtown dollars at a 20% discount. So we, that, that goes right back to all our businesses. Tell us what you feel is the biggest and more important support that you provide, and why, why is that important? If you want to make improvements to your building, you're able to you know, get some financial support from the downtown. If you wanted to uh, install some some uh, some painting lines in your parking lot or you have to redo your parking lot, you know, there's funding available for that. Bruce, you've been with DFI a long time. What is the favorite project you've ever worked on? Um, back in the 90s when we first, you know, uh, were looking at how we could redevelop and revitalize our downtown, we, we took on a program with the city, with the federal government and the provincial government and we changed the face of downtown. We built the curbs and the sidewalks and the brickwork, the accent, decorative lighting, put in park benches, flower planters, and, and we spent, in those days, which was a lot of money, about $4 million and hit every block in the downtown. We've also worked with our festivals, the uh, MB Craft Festival that was always at Matiquac, and it was great up at Matiquac, but it ran its course up there. People weren't attending. They dropped their numbers from over 20,000 down to 2,000 a year. So we went and said, look, we would love to see you downtown. We have a great location. We'll help you out. And we financially supported them. And they, they came back into the, the downtown. And their numbers went from the 2,000, 1,500, 2,000 
back up to over 10 and 12,000 people. I'm wondering if COVID impacted your organization and your members and how? It's impacted our, our retail and business community and, and uh, food and beverage industry very much. Uh, I think we've learned a lot from it. So I don't think it was a failure. I mean, I, it's really had, uh, you know, had its days, but our businesses uh, have changed the way they work and operate. Mike, as a business owner, um, and you own several businesses in the downtown, tell me your perspective on how COVID impacted you and your fellow members. Just the ever-changing and the unknown is what probably affected us the most, just not knowing what's coming up next and, uh, you know, getting different, different uh, you know, the rules and regulations that was put in place for people's safety, I think, was, uh, was important to do. Uh, but unfortunately, with that comes with a lower number of people that are able to enter your business. So I think... You know, um, a lot of things have shifted. I would have to say that the Fredericton community, the greater community, has been uh, unbelievable in terms of supporting our local businesses. What organizations do you work with, do you collaborate with, that support your efforts? We work very, very closely with the City of Fredericton, all, all different departments from the city. We also have other partners, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Trina over in uh, the uh, Business Fredericton North. All of these people that we work with, uh, and we're all in it for one reason, and that's to develop uh, a successful organization and, and successful members. So during your time with DFI, what would you say has been the most difficult thing you've encountered? The last couple of months, we've been working to get a courthouse downtown. And that probably uh, was one of uh, the worst files that we've ever had to come by. <laughs> we needed that land developed. This project came along, then Minister Green, uh, Jill, who's a, I look at her now as a very good friend of downtown, uh, was able to carry that file and bring that courthouse into the downtown. It wasn't easy by any means, and uh, that was probably one of the, the biggest struggles we've had over the last, last few years. How do you see the economy and economic opportunities and the business environment moving forward? We're looking at a redo of the Centennial Building, we're seeing a courthouse, we're hoping that the Performing Arts Centre will come to fruition very quickly. Um, we have residential developments that are bringing more people downtown. We're on the right path, uh, but we need those, those partnerships to continue to make, make a difference. Tell me about the plans for DFI. What is going to happen in the next year, or the next three years, or even the next five years? What's next? So now we're into um, looking strategically at changing the face of downtown again. We've got a courthouse coming online. That will have a tremendous impact. We're looking to get our convention business back up and running. I think that the next five years are going to be very good to downtown. What would you say you're most proud of? I'm proud that we have an organization like this that, is, that allows them to bring their ideas to a table and we're able to talk it through, get other points of view from around the table, and then, uh, and then give it to the staff and give it to Bruce. And as long as our downtown's clean, then you'll keep coming back. Welcome back to Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce. Today, we're speaking to business support agencies. And next up is Adam Peabody, Director of Planet Hatch. Uh, Planet Hatch is an entrepreneurship center uh, located right here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And we work with early stage entrepreneurs to help them develop globally competitive startup companies. So I've heard the term incubator and I've heard the term accelerator. What's the difference and which one are you? The difference between incubation and acceleration in our view is the level of commitment and the level of time an entrepreneur has to uh, hit the goals towards that end stage. We have a range of incubation programs, which we refer to as sort of at the moment tools for entrepreneurs to use on their own time and at their own pace. Now that differs from our acceleration programs, which would be very rigorous, very focused programs, usually over a period of about eight to 12 weeks. So when did Planet Hatch actually get started? Why? And where did the name come from? 
We opened our doors in 2013, and the idea was um, to not only support existing business owners, but find opportunities in economic development to provide more focused and specific resources to those just starting out. And uh, the physical expression of that desire, I think, from the community started with Planet Hatch. What are the various services that you provide here at Planet Hatch? Um, for us, business coaching and counseling, one-on-one uh, -on -one with entrepreneurs. We have funding. We have a variety of programs, incubation and acceleration. We have two co-working and private office locations. And then we do a range of events throughout the year to connect all of these folks together. Explain to me the relationship between Planet Hatch, Ignite Fredericton, and Knowledge Park. Planet Hatch is all about early stage entrepreneurship and startups and innovation. Ignite Fredericton would be more focused on your traditional economic development roles. Now Knowledge Park um, is really focused on infrastructure. Uh, at the end of the day, it's really a real estate company. Um, and so we provide a clustering environment for companies in the knowledge and innovation sector. And we have five buildings uh, here uh, on a main campus with about uh, 40 companies in them and approximately 800 employees. Where does the funding come from to pay for all this great work that you're doing? COA, the province of New Brunswick, we have corporate partners like McKinnis Cooper, RBC and Grant Thornton. And then we work really hard uh, to uh, commercialize the products and services that we provide at a low uh, cost, but to create uh, a sustainable uh, financial model. We are just a team of five at Planet Hatch. Uh, we've been able to grow over the years um, and we have some really, really uh, not only capable but passionate individuals. Um, and so I think we often will do uh, like that uh, little train that could more than you would expect uh, along the way. And of course, you know, in addition to the team that's working full time at Planet Hat, we're helped by so many organizations and individuals that just feel really passionately uh, about our clients succeeding. And that includes organizations like the Chamber uh, and many others, too many for me to name. The extended team, uh, you know, may reach into the hundreds while we are just a small team of five. So when you think about the types of businesses that make up your membership or your clientele, what, are, what types of businesses are they? We work with a wide, wide range of individuals from different backgrounds. Uh, we've, been, we've successfully helped uh, entrepreneurs launch, I think we're, we're over 300 new businesses now across 18 sectors. The stage of business is much more important. So those that will find Planet Hatch the most helpful are those that not only have an idea, but have started to develop the product or service and are not trying to figure out what am I going to do or the product or service as much as they are now how do I start making money with it. So this episode of Business Insight Fredericton is about support agencies. Why do you think the support that you provide to these starting businesses, why is it so important? So the support that we provide our clients is really important for them because we can save them time, save them money and help them get to where they want to go faster. What would you consider to be the biggest success of Planet Hatch? I think uh, the over 300 startups that have launched in our community, and we haven't launched those, but we've helped the founders launch them. And not only those 300, but over 80% of them are still in business and growing today. Tell me how COVID impacted life here at Planet Hatch. The first few months was uh, a really, uh, really hard time for our clients and we felt that deeply. Um, a number of our clients went on a business. Um, a number of them came very close and were able to uh, pull ahead uh, and they're doing really well now. What do you think is the most difficult thing that you've experienced or that Planet Hatch has experienced? The first Four weeks of COVID has definitely been the most challenging, stressful time uh, for our clients, for our team personally, having to go from wh everything that we did uh, before and the successes that our clients were having and all of the growth and excitement to within hours, how do we save this business? How do we stop from going over the edge? 
So tell me how you feel the economy is in New Brunswick and what do you think the opportunities are? We are actually seeing a much higher demand in terms of new startups needing services than what I hear and see from a lot of my colleagues around the world. So we're in a good place right now, even though times are tough and things are challenging. Adam, what is the best advice that you have received? Uh, there's a time for everything in the sense that like there's a time to hurry up, there's a time to be patient, there's a time, <laughs> right? And so trying to understand what time you're in and what it calls for um, is something I got advice on and have used a lot. So if you were going to give someone advice, maybe on running a not-for-profit organization or advice to guide uh, a startup business, what's the best advice you could give them? Obsess your clients and know them inside out and build really good trusting relationships with them. Has Planet Hatch received any awards or commendations or any celebrations you'd like to share with us? Uh, yeah, so we have won uh, a number of awards. I've uh, been really honored to uh, win uh, not only at the local and provincial but also at the national level. Um, but I think the most important recognition for us is uh, what our clients say about us at the end of the day. Uh, and we did a recent survey a few months ago and 90% are saying they find our staff very valuable, uh, that they've ha we've had a significant impact on the growth of their business. Uh, and many of them saying that without us, they don't feel like they would have reached the success or they might have not been successful at all. What goals does Planet Hatch have for the next year or the next three or even five years? For us, working to uh, improve the overall customer or client experience uh, is really top of mind. Welcome back to Business Insight Fredericton. I'm Krista Ross, CEO of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce, your host. Up next, I'll be speaking to Megan Seagrave. She's the Executive Director of BioNB. We're an NGO that was set up by the province 25 years ago, uh, and we're focused on research and commercialization of bio industries uh, in New Brunswick and Atlantic Canada. What would you say are the various or the, the most important areas of the work that you do? We work with um, early stage companies, later stage companies, research organizations and academic institutions. Um, we also work with governments. Uh, so we're mandated um, to ensure that bio industries uh, advance and innovate with technologies to grow the economy. Our industries are so diverse. Agriculture, aquaculture, forestry, fisheries, and then all of the technology companies that would innovate within those industries. So we're cross-sectoral. If it's about early stage companies, um, we do some initial hand-holding to help validate the science and the technology because we all understand that space. Um, we also help navigate the funding um, labyrinth that exists out there provincially, regionally and nationally. Where does your funding come from? We were set up by the province 25 years ago. We had uh, an, an endowment that was set up half provincial, half federal uh, to the tune of 3 point million total and we are still using that for our core operations 25 years later. So tell me about the structure of the organization, about your team. Most of our team have science backgrounds and I spent the early part of my career in tech startup companies. So 10 years in technology startup companies out west, combine that with a graduate degree in science. Uh, we've always got someone on the marketing and communications side and recently within the last three years we actually brought uh, an individual on who has an economics background to try and highlight more of the impact that our organization and the industries that we support. So how many employees actually work with the organization? It's a mix. Um, we've had as many as 14 and we've had as few as three and it really depends on the projects that we're taking on to, uh, to support either the, the provincial government or the federal government. And what is your footprint for that base? Is everybody right here in Fredericton? For the most part, we're here in Fredericton. Um, we do a lot of contract, um, we do a lot of contract support for the province as well. So we'll bring contractors in from all over the province and all over the region, and sometimes even outside of the region. Who would you say is your main clientele, and how do you communicate with them? We have um, 
I guess sort of distinct categories of clientele because we work with government. We actually consider government both federal and provincial as clientele. We work with companies, early stage and later stage companies, and we work with research institutes that include academia. Tell me about what types of messaging you're putting out and which platforms are you on? We work on all the social media platforms. We like to promote uh, a lot of the funding programs that exist out there uh, regionally, provincially, regionally, and nationally. Um, anyone that we think will actually support uh, any of the groups that we work with. And we do a lot of education um, through social media. We work with very complicated and complex technologies in environments that are also complex. So we recently started doing a, a, a big push around carbon and the opportunities as well as the potential hurdles that it's going to bring to the table. Megan, what would you say is the favorite project you've ever worked on? There's a couple. Uh, we do an event every year called BioCon. Uh, now COVID has changed to that and we've, we've gone virtual with that. But prior to um, COVID, we, we moved it around the Atlantic provinces every year and it was essentially a way of introducing um, technology and opportunities to uh, stakeholders. Uh, within the environment. So investors came to the table, governments were at the table, early stage and late stage technology companies and academia. And it was all about making that convergence. The second one is um, we led the build out of one of the superclusters um, out of our office here and it was the only national supercluster to get pitched. Tell me how COVID has impacted your organization. Initially, when the lockdown happened, um, we kind of went into this stasis, uh, you know, let's, uh, um, let's just batten down the hatches and see where things are going. And then we picked up um, on all the virtual opportunities that it created. We were able to pivot, um, which made sense. I mean, everyone sort of took advantage of that. That being said, um, I'm going to say the increase in engagement that we've had with especially on the early stage companies and doing the hand-holding through um, the funding labyrinth has skyrocketed. What would you say, Megan, is the most difficult thing that you've faced with the organization? The most difficult thing with this organization is we were set up by government for government, but every time we have a government changeover, whether it be provincially or federally, we have to we have to re-educate on the mandate, but that re-education that has to happen every time there's a government changeover is really difficult. How do you feel about the economy, about business opportunities or the business environment in New Brunswick right now? COVID has, um, has definitely had an impact and it's, it's had a negative impact on our businesses even though we've had a lot of federal dollars come into the province through those transfer payments and the COVID supports. That being said, um, I think there's a lot of great opportunity, especially around the greening economy and greening industries. Um, we look at it as bio-industries because the foundation of New Brunswick's economy is still agriculture, forestry, fisheries and aquaculture. And if we start applying technologies to adopt and adapt and innovate within those industries, um, those industries are going to grow. What could the average person or the average business owner who's not involved in your industry, what can they do to understand more and do more? 85% of our province is still covered in trees. 45% of our GDP is made up of our resource-based industries. So what can we do to help them adopt, adapt, bring technologies on to increase their productivity and their competitiveness? We're going to have a leg up on the competition because we are starting from a resource-based industry. We're not starting from a fossil fuel-based industry. Has BioNB won any awards or commendations that you can tell us about? We have won Kira's in the past. We've won National Ecosystem Support Awards. We're always looking for great companies with a unique story to feature on the show. If you have suggestions, please get in touch with us.